Hey guys, this is Mike, also known as the One Fig Man, out on message boards such as Our Figs and Figbit.com. I'm here today to do an interview with Mr. Capoche and uh, introduce the Capoche fig. This fig came over here roughly about 50 years ago or so. We're going to get some, a little more information during the interview with Mr. Capoche and we're going to do a little exploration of this fig. It's a new variety that we're bringing you that we're hoping that it's real cold hardy. We are on the border between Zone 6 and Zone 7. So we're gonna take a look at the tree, find out what Mr. Capoche did, and um, and explore uh, the, the heritage of this tree and Mr. Capoche. Thanks for joining us. Okay guys, so we're here with Mr. Capoche. Uh, this is the person who brought over his fig. We're gonna ask some questions about it. We're gonna call it the Capoche fig. And behind us we have Dan. Dan is actually uh, one of the family members of the Chiglia Dulce. And we're going to have a, 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 another video about the Chiglia Dulce because he's actually an ancestor of the people that brought over the Chiglia Dulce, so he has more information. But I want to have a little bit of a short uh, questions, short interview with Mr. Capoche, who's gracious enough to uh, spend some time with us. It was recently your birthday, was it? You're 97 now? How old are you? Danny. Yeah, he's a family man. Family. Family man. He's a family man? Yeah. He's brother. This guy right here, Danny? He used to go to the factory? What the father? Yellow town. Yellow town. He worked at the Yellow Town. The Yellow Town. Yeah. Okay. Lock company. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. They worked at the, my, my dad and he worked at the Yale in town uh, together. That was that. Oh, I remember that lock. They now yes. they sold it. They made the sweetheart lock. Right? That's right. Uh huh. Yes. Yeah. That's the. Yeah. That's... That was during during the war. They you know they made the locks for the uh, for air, airplanes and um, and uh, they. Uh... I have the Mortise locks in my house that right. actually have the old Yale and. Right. Okay. Which what was the question? You are. Which was you are. <laughs> Where was you house. My, your house? My house? My house is out in Connecticut. Yeah. You. Let me ask you some questions about, about the your heritage, the figs. What part of Italy do you come from? Italy. Where where did you what what's the name of your town in Italy? Sette fra. Sette fra. Sette frate. And there's a picture right over there of the town. Yeah. That's Sette frate? Mm hmm Okay, well, we'll put up a picture of that uh, shortly for you guys. So, is this where your fig tree comes from? We got a picture. Yeah, he's got it right up there. Now, yeah. tell me, Dad, yeah. when you got the figs, the fig tree, did that fig tree outside come from Sette frate? Did you bring it over? No, I brought a small plant. He brought a small plant. You pick it in small. Okay. What they get there? Put them in the ground. Put them in the ground. The only thing they were covered in the wind. Cover you cover it in the wind. Yeah. Winter. Winter. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I saw the trees outside back. They're bent over. Yeah. They're all over. So there are four trees in the back, and he used to have a lot more back there. They're all over the place. Mm -hmm. It's just he keeps transplanting, you know, twigs of them. Sure. When when did you bring the tree over? What year? I used to be, when I used to go to Italy, 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 it is so. Well, I said them, I come home from Santa Brad. I come. So when you go back to set the front, then you bring them. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. What do you call it? The paper? The paper. Put them in a piece, like a piece of wrapping. No. Oh, no? What do you call it? Suitcase. Oh, in the suitcase. In yeah, the valise. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you bring them over. What year did you, you know, say, if you guys mind holding one second, I'm going to get a microphone and see if we could plug a microphone yeah, in so he, we can hear them a little better. Yeah, that's the two. All right. His voice. Guys, I'll be right back with a microphone. Do you remember how long ago it was that you brought these trees back? Twelve, fifteen years. Not when we were little kids. Oh, when we were little, yeah. When we were little, huh? We had them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can remember them when I was uh, 10 years old. That, oh, that, was, that was uh, 67 years ago. Yeah. I brought them over in So, when did you bring your fig trees over? When did you bring your first tree? Oh, when I came along with them. Broke a time. A long time ago? Fifty years ago? Yeah. Okay. What kind of what kind of fig do you have back there? All kinds. All kinds. Most of the big one. July you eat. In July you eat them. Yeah, you look next week. Start look around. You might see already. Okay. Make sure they're soft. Mm -hmm. So he's saying that uh, his figs come in in July, that I, we should make sure that they're soft and uh, that they're ready to be eaten. So what color are they when they're ripe? The figs, when they're ready to be eaten, what color are they? Good. Soft, very soft. They're very soft. Yeah. What color? What's the color of the fig? Is it red, purple? Red. Like a purple, I think. Like a purple. Yeah, like, like a, the rest. Like the rest, yeah. Kind of a plum color. The outside is plumish mm -hmm. color, purple yeah. color. And what about the inside? I think it's pretty much the same yeah. color. Red. 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 Red inside with a lot of tiny seeds. Yeah. Right? A lot of seeds in there. Little yeah. ones. Yeah. Yeah. Take the skin off. Take the skin off if you want. Yeah. Yeah. Where's Danny? Danny's right back of you. I'm right here. Here he is. I'm behind you. He's listening to you. Yeah. Look at him. He's got a little backyard. No more now. No more now? I don't know, Danny. Danny, what did you do with your tree? I still have my tree. But I don't have, I, I can't propagate your tree. I'm trying to propagate your tree, Jack. Well, pretty soon you can come and dig them. Good. <laughs> What's that? You can come and dig trees out. Oh, gee. I'd love to. Well, really. What, what do you like about this fig? What? what do you like about this fig? What is the flavor profile? How does it taste? I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh. Profile? <laughs> have you tried his fig? Yes, of course. And what does it taste like to you? Is it a is it a sh sugary or is it uh, fruity? It's it's more I think. Kind and of a sugary, this is his daughter. Sugary, soft. You know what they put inside fig newtons, except they've been doctored up so severely with sugar. It's not quite that. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's a nice, soft consistency, and you can feel the little tiny seeds in there that mm -hmm. you know could get stuck in your teeth and stuff. But it's um. This guy could sit and eat. How many figs you eat, Dad? A lot. You could bring him in a whole bowl. He'd sit there and eat them all. So. Oh, uh, you touch them and they should break apart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This first one they come, they're green. Yeah. They're green, but they're hard. Yeah. So you gotta watch them every day to well, until they turn purple. 
Because otherwise, you know who's going to get them? What? Who's going to eat them out there? The animals. The, animals, the, animals, the birds. Huh? Yeah. They're gonna... Yeah, it's right out there. They're everywhere. We're surrounded by figs. Yep, that's what I've been doing. Yep, you see. Yep. And look around and look around. And when they turn that color... Feel the fig, make sure it's soft and ready to be in. You just want it just where it starts to just push in a little bit and you can almost rip the skin. It's almost spongy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. So you were, so to recap, you brought the trees over around 50 years ago. So that's, uh, we're 2019, so roughly 1980, 1970? Could have been even sooner. No, it's, it's, it's sooner 1950? 19, yeah, I, I was... 10 years old, and that was 67 years ago, and I was eating them. Okay, you yeah. were eating, okay. I so was, I, was, I was here eating them. We were here all the time at this house. Um, were they yeah. about that size in 1967? Oh, yeah. he's, he's 97 years old. He came here how many years ago? When he was uh, 14. So, but he didn't bring fig trees then? I doubt it, because no. we just immigrated yeah. and immigrated to New York. Okay. And then eventually to Stanford. When did, when did he come here, Rosemary? What year did uh, he come? Uh, when it, 40 years old. Was in the forties, right? Yeah. Forty, forty-two. Forty-two. So like that, yeah, yeah. So what? Uh, yeah. I, you know, yeah. I was, I was ten years old at fifty-one, and I remember the trees here. Daddy. Yeah, Danny's right here, and the brothers, Junior, Junior. Where is that boy? I don't know where he is. Never see him. What can I tell you? He's a dull son. I baptized. You baptized him. Oh, there we go. So, what else do you want to share with us about the figs? What do you want to tell the uh, the fig lovers out there who are interested in your tree? You know that? What can we tell them? Is there anything else you want to share with them? Okay. Yeah. Any? Well, see, he just wants to know if you want to say anything more about the figs. Because you want to know something? He's going to name these figs Capoche Fig. Oh boy, isn't that, so that's going to be Capoche Fig, ah, <laughs> Capoche Fig, that's going to be famous, hey, okay, yeah, that's great. And it's a wonderful early fig. <laughs> yeah, so last it's time we were here, it's a year, wonderful early fig. He was telling us that the figs come in, that has a breba crop, an early ripening crop, that comes in a little bit later, but the main crop comes in earlier. Yeah. Oh, okay, so they, some early figs in May, and then some other ones in you, August, or just? You, you don't plant. You don't plant? No, the tree, the tree. The tree just comes, yeah. You won't have to cover. Oh, you? The weather. Oh, you, you don't cover them even in, in spite of the fact that it's cold here. Yeah. Oh. Do you lay them down flat and do you, cover do you, them? Do you cover them? Do you, do you cover the figs or you just let them be? You put it so you, 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 go, you cover them. You cover them. Yeah. yeah, what he does is he puts a, uh, a cover over them. He bends them over a little bit and he puts a cover on them. And oh. He doesn't put any leaves or anything. Oh, really? Because you have lots of leaves over well, there. I thought yeah. maybe. Yeah, okay. You, okay, you just take a big cover, in a blanket, and you put them over. You tell what I'm to get. Too bad. And then you drop the canvas. And it, uh -huh. Then they're outside. The olive, olive. Yeah? Sette Frate, too. Because they have olive trees in Sette Frate. Yeah. Okay. What, uh, yeah. what, what color are the figs? The skin and the fruit? Whatever I see I take, yeah. I'm going to make sure that you guys are okay with whatever I take. Because if that's the case, I'll come here and take all your trees. <laughs> come with a big truck, dig them all up. Yeah, well, yeah. So, 
So what do you know when they ripen? Like he says, before, is it before? Are the figs ripe before you before the feast in Italy? Before you go to the feast in Italy, are the figs ripe, or you gotta wait till you come back from the feast? Yeah, I go I, July. July, you go to the feast. July fifteenth. Right. Uh, yep. Yeah, you go. July fifteenth is a feast. Day you go feel. Every day you go. You yeah, realize. I think you're pretty much just during that July period, and then they they do go on later even yeah. because I remember being here. So the figs are usually ready in Italy in Sassifras. Sette fra. Sette fra. Seven brothers. Meaning I'm not Italian. I Sorry tell. guys. <laughs> <laughs> I've butchered every Italian fig name so far or fig or well, Italian city. Yeah. So no, this is just a tiny village. Okay. It's still almost pretty much the same. Still so, that you know, there's some modern so, but the figs ripen before July 15th. Yeah, kind in of Sante like they Fra. start to show up, I think. Junior was baptized. Yeah, Junior you baptized. Yeah, that's Danny's brother. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so so the figs were, so so the figs are ready before July 15th. And they kind of get, start getting ready in July. Okay. And then even when he co comes back, you know, August, whatever it is, there may be some still there. But it's, okay. uh, you know, the process that's interesting is that, you know, you have to take those trees and before the winter comes, like in the fall, what do you have to do with the trees oh, that cover them? And you also have to do what? Sometimes you got to bend them over. Bend them over. So, like... Dry. Yep, you have to bend them over, cover them, and then you put even leaves on the top to protect them from the cold and so the frost. So we saw. What's that? At one time, you used to bend them over. Got well, yeah, it's clear. Yeah. And you could pick them over. This is more. That's. Other plant. This way. Yes. It's you bent see? over. I don't think so. No, I don't think so. These weren't covered. No. They were covered at one time. Yeah, they at were one covered time. at one time. But it's not a back in his day, this year. he bent them over, yeah. put the yeah. tarp over. All these leaves probably yeah. covered the. Uh, that's what they used to do in Italy. It's like the, the leaves protect the root from the. So we saw we saw the ones that were bent over and it's clear and when we get out there I'll show you guys uh, what the fig trees look like, but it looks like he did have spikes in the ground. Yeah. They used to bend them over, yeah. and hold it down, and cover it in and leaves. Cover it. Yeah. But now last winter, last winter here was a brutal winter. We had minus ten, minus yeah, fifteen and I degrees. Yeah, I don't believe. I don't know. You know, sometimes you pay somebody to come over. Come here over. I don't think do anything it. was done with those. But, but I'll tell you, there was no, no. dieback. But I can tell you one thing. They have grown unbelievably. Yeah. They're huge. Okay, so this is uh, this is a close up of the capochi fig, and what we could see here is a lot of the branches are swept over. I have an older video that I took a couple months ago that didn't have all the leaves on it, and we'll show you what they look like. But what you could see here is that at one time, now Mr. Capochi just turned 97 today, so the care for these trees are not the same as it used to be back in the day. But what you can see is there's a metal pole here that looks like was staked into the ground. And then the branches were all bent over at one time. And from my understanding, were covered with a, a net or a tarp. And then there's a lot of leaves down there. And what they used to do is just cover that with leaves. Nowadays, uh, the, uh, the trees have been, the trees aren't being cared for, but they are surviving in our winter here. And this tree had absolutely no dieback, again, which I'll, I'll, I'll put together the other segment of the video for you, that uh, all the tips were fresh. Now the Chiglia dulce isn't as protected as this tree, and there was dieback. But uh, this Capochi fig is on the southern side of the house. So what we're seeing is a microclimate that's being created from one, the, uh, the, the heat coming off the house, and two, the northern winds are being protected 
the house is being is protecting the uh, the fig tree from the northern winds. So uh, this is a, this is a good variety that we're hoping to, uh, to to introduce and test the cold hardiness. Of course, you know this tree with the thickness of the uh, trunk and the age that it's been here, so the roots are pretty far in ground. There is a uh, there's, that, that that helps with the survival rate of the tree. So, so if you go ahead and get a one gallon pot of this. Don't expect this to be cold hardy that you're going to put it in zone six in your house and set it and forget it. You'll probably the entire tree will probably die. Again, these roots are so well sunken into the ground, they are getting a lot of heat and that microclimate that's also being created. So what we're finding out is that these figs here, this is this is middle August right now. These figs look like they're the main crop. Uh, we were speaking to Dan just a few minutes ago, who again, if he is the uh, He's the actual family owner of the Chiglia Dulce who introduced us to Mr. Capocci. And Dan was saying, Dan, why don't you come on over? You were saying, uh, go ahead in. Let, oh. let, let the viewers see who you are. So Dan, you were saying these figs, uh, you were here how long ago? About three weeks ago, three and a half weeks ago. So and the beginning were, of they August? Were pretty big over on this side. End of July? Yeah, about end of July, yes. Okay. And I was shocked at how big they were and uh, how nice they were. Uh, I think they're all gone now. Too bad. I should have taken a picture of them. And what color were the skins? Uh, how color? What color were the, was the skin of the fruit? Oh, it was still greenish. But it was they were, still they greenish. They were pretty big. Okay. They were much, much larger than what you see here. These are much smaller. It was twice. It was twice the size of this fig uh, on this side. Maybe okay. Two and a half times that size. They were pretty big. I was shocked. Huh. How big they were. And what color were the inside of the fruits? I don't know. I didn't. Uh, I didn't uh, take any. You but didn't they, take they weren't any. ripened. They weren't ripe. No, they were not ripe. Okay. They were ready. They were ready. So the end of and July, the beginning of August, they were getting ready were to be picked, ready. but they yes, weren't exactly. fully ripe. Yeah. They okay. Were so you ready, waited. You waited another two to three weeks, and it looks like uh, the the animals got them. I, I couldn't. I couldn't believe it to, to come here and they're not here. The animals well, and I was the neighbors. Ready to eat them today. But, yeah, uh, I brought all my my testing <laughs> kit so we could take a look at these figs. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Yeah. No, they were they were twice as big as these. So we're expecting uh, two crops from this. We're expecting a uh, a breba crop that is already around the end of July, beginning of August, and then it looks like what we have is a main crop that, judging by the size, I'm going to guess that these are probably going to be ready in about another month. So give us the beginning of September, worst case scenario, end of September. So I'm hoping. All right, beautiful, beautiful tree. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go over. I'm gonna flip the video over to the next segment. Where I'm gonna show you uh, his, historically, rough when we were here a, a few months ago, what the trees look like. Now, Mr. Capocci, the last couple of uh, couple months has not been doing well. So, um, you know, we saw him up and walking in the last video that that we're gonna segment to right now. So he had, to, he had to stay inside for the video that we just saw, the interview that we just saw. And I know, guys, it was real difficult to hear him. We tried to, uh, tr to try to speak up and reiterate what he had said. So I hope you guys are, uh, are patient with us. You got a 97-year-old man from, uh, how do you say it? Sette frate? Sette frate. Sette frate. Sette frate. I'm going to practice my time for you guys. Um, 97-year-old man from Sette frate brings back a uh, fig tree from his hometown, his home village. This is it. So, so guys, this is our video today with the, uh, with the Capocci interview. And um, when we get some figs out of this, we're gonna do a fig tasting on the Capocci fig. I really appreciate you joining us for this video. If you liked it, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, hit that red subscribe button and join me for future videos. Thanks for joining.